Hello internet people, what's up? Welcome to the stream. We have a nice rainy day today, perfect for coding. And actually, let me just open the window a bit because I want to hear a bit of the rain. So in a previous stream yesterday, I um, explained um, how a PDF file is laid out and how the binary data in a PDF file is stored in these so-called stream objects. And we are currently working on um, making these stream objects accessible to our code. Our workhorse, workhorse uh, horse function is this one, the PDF stream open. And you just tell this function which of the stream objects you want to open and you expect to get an abstract data stream interface uh, from which you can consume the uncompressed data from the stream. And the workings of this function are, are quite complicated because PDF streams are quite uh, complicated. They can have multiple layers of um, decompression filters um, on top of each other. And so yesterday I started in a quite awkward way to implement this function and off stream I did a bit of cleanup. So it's a, now a bit saner than what we had at the end of the last stream. And I want to quickly give you a tour of, of how the function uh, works currently. So um, as I explained at the beginning of a stream, you have the stream dictionary that uh, defines attributes of the stream, for example, which decompression filters to use in order to decompress it and all the parameters you need for these filters. And we store these things in uh, two uh, independent arrays now because the problem is that we don't know in which order these things are defined in the uh, stream dictionary. So we have one array for the filter types and one array for the filter parameters. These are initialized here. So at the beginning they are not even allocated because we don't know if we will have any filter filters at all. Then we do this dance here, which is just looking up the stream object in the cross-reference cache and checking that everything is consistent. Uh, then we begin to set up um, a data stream for the raw portion of the stream data. So that's the data just one-to-one -one as it is, uh, as it appears in the PDF file. This is the first data source that we set up. It's this data source raw. Um, in order to set this up, we seek to the position in the um, in the stream where the stream object in, in the PDF file where the stream object starts. We pass the start of the indirect object. Again, we do some consistency checks. Um, which is quite typical for such a wasteful textual format like PDF that you have lots of consistency conditions because there is quite a lot of redundancy in the data. So having found this indirect object and having verified that it is the right one, we start to parse the stream dictionary. We currently look at the following things. We look at the length entry that gives us the length of the compressed data, that is of the raw data in the PDF, which we need in order to detect the stream end properly. We parse the decode parameters, which are these, these filter parameters. Whenever we find the code parameters, we add them to our array of, of 
uh, parameters. So there are, there are multiple um, ways that these arguments or attributes can be specified. So they can be arrays or there can be only a single one and so on. So you have lots of um, annoying details to take care of, which we do here. Uh, we look at the actual filter specification, uh, specification that gives us the filter types. But we do not construct the filter yet because we do not know at this point if we already have the necessary parameters and so on. So we just remember the type and everything else we currently skip. So there will later be a, a user hook uh, so that the caller of this function can actually look at their stream dictionary for extra attributes that it might be interested in. So we should notice here that this is incomplete. Um, pass other dictionary entries to a user um, hook function provided by the caller. Uh, this we will do later when we have a need for that. So we checked that we got the length and as soon as we have the length and we have parsed the, the stream dictionary, we start the stream proper. We set up the raw data source to begin at this point where the actual stream data starts. And yeah, then, then we need to start setting up the actual decompression filters. So first we do further consistency checks. So we need to check if, if we got some filter parameters, if we got the same number of parameter packages as we have decoding filters. So we check that here. Um, the standard is not too clear about um, the, con the appropriate consistency conditions here. For example, I don't know if the parameter array is shorter than the filter array if we should assume default parameters for the extra filters. So that's that's something I, I'm not sure about. So let's maybe um, make a note here. The only such mismatched case that we currently support is a common case that we have a filter specified but no filter parameters specified at all. In this case, we provide default parameters to all the filters. So this is already there. Okay, um, as soon as we have sorted out the parameters, we start to actually construct the, the data source uh, layers for the individual filters. Now the real work starts. We must implement LCW decompression and I have never done this before I must say. I just looked at the description in the PDF standard and it seems simple enough. It's actually just basically one page roughly that describes this decompression algorithm and yeah it's an adaptive table based algorithm so both the encoder and the decoder synchronously built a compression table that allocates short uh, codes that are used uh, for repeated uh, patterns in the input data. And there's a fixed algorithm that both the encoder and the decoder use to build up this table so the table itself does not have to be part of the compressed data. 
and yeah this is the algorithm we, we need to implement that builds up this table and, and at the same time outputs the decompressed data and first we will not uh, care about making this fast first we will just as always uh, we will first try to make it work reasonably and then we can think about how to speed it up so the table can have up to 4096 entries um, and as this is not not large for modern systems we will just always allocate the full table um, yeah and hope that the part of the table we use that that will fit in a fast cache level in the end when later when we need to make things fast so um, let's lay out the table and the thing is i mean basically the table is an array of structs uh, that look i think will look like this so i'm just sketching this now every entry will have um, a character so that's the encoded uh, input character and a a code that can up to can be up to 12 bit actually um, for the prefix because the table is built up in a way that you always add you append a a, a, a byte like this uh, ch here you append this byte to an already existing sequence in the table and so that the prefix specifies that before this byte you actually need to put this sequence that is already in the table um, so the prefix always points to a earlier table element that encodes the sequence that comes before the sequence that we actually or that is the prefix of the sequence that we actually encode and this is the last character then of the encoded sequence um, now um, if we make an array of this struct this will probably waste at least one byte for each entry which is a pity because we want to make this as compact as compact as possible i think so i think what we actually will do is um, we will want to squeeze that all into an array of um, I mean we could also teach the compiler to pack this struct and so on but I want to keep this simple and just um, and just have a fixed table and basically we need three bytes per entry so basically our table size should be this right um, however we do not we do not need to encode the first fixed entries of the table i mean maybe we should maybe we should encode them to make the code simpler but it's just wasting just wasting cache lines probably in the end when we want to make things fast so my idea would be to subtract <coughs> the fixed the number of fixed table entries so the fixed table entries are the first 256 that correspond to literal input bytes and then you have one for the command to clear the table and one for the data end marker 
so end of data marker. So that's the table we need. And we should probably um, document the uh, table layout. But this we will do later when we know how it actually looks like. So the nice thing is that we actually do not even need to dynamically allocate this table. So maybe we don't even need the done function. Maybe we don't need it. That would be nice. Um, what we will also need is a um, we we need to know the current table size. So the number of used table entries. There is also, so we will build up the table and as the table grows, when the table reaches certain sizes, uh, we will need to uh, step up the code size. So that the indices into the table are just encoded as integers with a certain number of bits. At the beginning, it's nine bits. And then when the table grows so large that nine bit is not enough, the, both the encoder and the decoder will switch to uh, 10 bits and so on up to 12 bits. So this is also a, a number that we will need to keep in mind. So that's the code size or whatever is what is called in the standard. It's just called code length. Now length is better than I mean, probably number of bits per code would be best. Uh, what we will also need to store probably to make our life easy is the next, the next limit of the table size where we will need to uh, increase the code size. So, um, um, next table size something like that Okay, so the easiest thing to set is the buffer size. Be 
because this we actually get passed in. Actually, we also will set buff So those are the stream pointers that we set. Then, yeah, the table doesn't need to be initialized, but the number of used table entries um, needs to be initialized to um, So this is 256 literal bytes plus uh, clear tail plus end of data commands. Those are always used. And the next uh, table size increasing the code length is um, I think in the standard they say it is 511 uh, because they say the first output code that is 10 bits long shall be the one following the creation of table entry 511 okay so it's it is actually 512 because when you create table entry 511, the table is size is 512. Yeah, there is another thing, but let, let's, there's actually an argument to the SCW decode filter when actually precisely when to increase the, the code size. This we will need to deal with later. So Don doesn't need to do anything. Okay. Um, Uh, let's get started. We get a fetch call. We need to provide some data. And now we need to handle two things. We need to handle the actual uh, SCW decompression and we also need to handle the, the stream buffer handling, both of the upstream that may or may not have data that it can provide to us and also of our own buffer. So that's a bit annoying. Um, we will first reset our stream pointer to the beginning of the buffer. Uh, we will have something like a destination pointer for filling, for filling our buffer. And at the end, we will set our end pointer to this destination pointer. Um, For the upstream, we will, for now, we will use, I think for the upstream, we will simply use the get character function for now. That's slow, but that's for now is simple. And later we can deal, we can think about more smart buffer handling. Um, so we will repeat this loop um, as long as we have space in the buffer. And for this we need the buffer size. So this end pointer marks the point where we run out of buffer space ourselves. 
and we will inside there will be a, so this will not always end at destination end because there will also be an um, end of data condition inside the loop. So <clears throat> okay, there's another thing uh, because the codes that we get from the input stream, they are not byte aligned. So we will need some way to keep non-byte aligned data around and to accumulate it uh, until we have enough, enough bytes. Because, for example, from our input stream, it's only guaranteed that we get at least one byte every time we call fetch. So it could be that we only get one byte. And this means that we wouldn't get a whole code. So uh, we need something like an, a bit reservoir. Let's actually put the table here at the end. It doesn't need alignment. Uh, the bit reservoir, how large do we need it? Uh, it the codes can be up to 12 bit. We probably, we probably will need up to 20 bits so we can conveniently add another 8 bits in there. So let's make this 32 bits. And we will need to remember how many bits we have in the in the reservoir. So all of these are initialized to zero that we have. Um, oh, n bits per code is something that we need to initialize. This starts at nine bits per code. <clears throat> so first, uh, we need to gather enough. We need to gather enough bytes from the input stream uh, to get a full code. So let's do that. Per code. Okay, so we have input bytes. Um, and we need to put them into the into a reservoir. There are multiple ways we could we could um, implement the reservoir. So a simple way would just be that we uh, say that the uh, bit reservoir is its old value shifted by 8 bits to the left and below them we put the input byte and um, in this way we have 
gathered eight more bits. So all of this is, is for sure horribly slow how, how we do it now, but that's just to get the logic straight. Okay, now we know we have enough. Um, we actually demand that we get bytes from the upstream here. Um, it's an error if we run into end of stream before we get the full code. So that's fine. So here we know that we have enough bits in the bit reservoir. Now let's quickly think about how many bits could we have in the bit reservoir at most and at least. So at least it should be the code size. But, um, what is the maximum amount of bits that we can have? So this check was true because we added more. So the largest code size can be 12. Uh, the largest number that is less strictly less than 12 is 11. So we go in with 11 bits and we add eight. So we have 19. That's the most we can get. <clears throat> uh, so now let's extract the actual code. I don't know, I mean, we could, we could also keep these 32 bits, probably even easier. So for the code, for getting the code, we actually need to shift out the, the extra bits that we don't need. So the extra bits are the number of bits buffered minus the code length. Okay, and then how do we consume the bits? Should we mask them out from the reservoir or should we, should we actually always keep stuff in the reservoir shifting to the left? And mask it out now that we Yeah, we should probably mask it out here. We could do it just by doing two shifts. That's maybe the... So I think that the reservoir was 32 bits, right? Yeah. So let's first, uh, let's first left align the MSB that we need. This will shift out all the, the crap that we don't need. So this will 
this will put uh, the highest bit that we have buffered into bit 31. And then we need to shift uh, the highest bit that we have buffered to um, n bits per code minus one. I think that should both mask everything out on the left that we don't need and it should align our code correctly. It should write right align. So let's explain this here. Um, I mean, actually, they are not garbage. They are just already consumed bits in the pit reservoir. We first uh, left align the MSP um, of the code we want to extract at bit 31, then we right align the LSP of the code we want to extract at bit 0. Okay, now we got our code. So um, we have several cases. Uh, those are the literal input bytes. So literal input byte um, this is the clear clear table command. This is end of data. Actually, we should check here for invalid codes. So if the code is uh, larger than or equal the number of used uh, table entries, then we have then we have a failure.
So we need the failed code path here that we always have in our code base. Okay. Uh, table clearing. I think this goes back to the default table that we have at the beginning, right? to restart with initial tables and then nine bit code length. Okay, so in this case, we, we reset to um, the initial table. probably nicer to write this like this also here so to have one magic number less So that's the table clearing. The end of data should be, so the end of data, I mean, we just, we break out of the loop. We probably should store that we have reached end of data somehow. So we probably should have some, some way to indicate that. But we could use bits buffered to indicate that. We could say something like that FF means that we have reached the end of data. Let's try that because then at the beginning when we get then we end the fetch. We can immediately bail out if we are already at the end of data. So
So let's set this marker here. Break out of the loop and there we go. We either have produced some bytes or, or not, uh, that's fine. <clears throat> So if we get a literal input byte, I think the first thing we do is we will actually write this byte uh, to we will write this byte to the destination buffer. And now we also need to create a table entry. So it always adds the first character of the triggered sequence to the previously used code. And I think I think we have a special case for the very first one where it is added to it. It's added to itself. We need something like um, to remember the previous code. Something like that. And let's say that um, yeah, clear table. If the previous code is the clear table code, it means that we have this special case. Actually, I always wrote the codes uh, in decimals, so let's keep that. Uh, we break here so actually in this case the previous code doesn't matter because we actually what we could do is whenever we reach uh, the Whenever we have a failure, we will also set the end marker. Because we have no way to recover. And then we need, don't need to care about the other data members because they won't be used in this case. So in all the other cases, uh, we actually can set the previous code to code.
And my thinking is here that um, we have something like code to append to, which is normally the previous code, um, except that if uh, the previous code is the clear table, then the code to append to is actually the code itself. So we do this doubling in the beginning. Okay, now we need to create a new table entry, if we can, because um, only if uh, the number of used table entries is smaller than the maximum. Yeah, we could maybe, I mean, maybe we should store the unused already subtracted. Yeah, let's care about details like this later. So we know the index of the new, uh, and let's assert that this index is actually uh, smaller than the size of the table. Actually, we will do this um, size of the table divided by, just to be consistent, size of the first element, which is actually one, so this division doesn't do anything. So that's the number of elements uh, minus three. So we know that we can store at least three bytes starting from this index. And the first byte that we store let's say this the first byte will be the, the previous the, the code to append to the high byte of the code to append to the second one will be So this will be the high byte, uh, this will be the low byte, and this will be our actual code.
<clears throat> then we increment the n used. And actually, if the incremented n used is uh, equal to the next size that triggers the code length increase, then we increment the code length. We increment the code length. Uh, we shift the next size that triggers the code length increase by one. However, we must now be careful if this is if this is the four thousand ninety six. We must stop incrementing the code size. So let's say we set this to zero. So this condition will this condition will never be true unless we reset everything. So this will not happen. Okay, that's our <clears throat> adding to the table. Or we will need to reuse this below. So not for this one, not for this one, but for this, uh, for, for the lookup. This will also need to do this stuff. So how could we because you see the problem is in this case we need to append only uh, the first byte of the We only append the first byte of the, and also the the further bytes that are produced from this sequence, they might not fit into our buffer. So they might not, they might not fit into our buffer. That's tricky because then, yeah, we will need to remember the state where we are in replaying the sequence. I mean, the good thing is that the first byte, the first byte for sure, the first byte for sure will fit. So 
so we know which we know which one to append so let's do it like this that let's do it simple and stupid let's make a variable code to append At that we set to um, let's say two five six means don't append. So, uh, and this, this we can figure out below. So let's put that here. And let's say if code to append is not this one, then we do this. Actually, we only do this if we also, if we have space in the table, so we can, we can actually check that here. So, so this layer is gone. So if we have a code to append and we have space in the table, create a new table entry. in a table then create a new table entry and what we here we say code to append Okay, so now we have we have reused this for the two cases. Code to append is here is code. Actually, we can make the the default, I guess, if we say code to append is code. So here we actually already have this. Here we break anyway. I mean, actually, because code to append is not a data member, so let's not be too verbose about that. <clears throat> So here it will be the first byte of the sequence. But then we actually have to generate the sequence. And generate, regenerating the sequence will also be quite a pain because our table stores them in 
sto stores them in post order. So we need to revert what we have in the table. For which we need kind of a stack probably, and that's annoying. I mean, actually, actually, we could be mostly smart about it. And the problem is, we don't really know the the length of each of the code the sequences because currently we don't store it. We could but we don't store it. We could but we don't. So we probably, I mean, let's do it in a really stupid way. Let's, let's make ourselves a kind of replay buffer. So replay buffer. Why do I write replace? Replay buffer count. That's initialized to zero. So that's the number of bytes that we have in the replay buffer. And in the replay buffer, we will put them in the reversed order, which is easy. So <clears throat> let's do it like Let's do it like this. For sure we need to calculate an index like we did here. Uh, we can do the same assert as we did here to make sure that we are accessing valid data. So the prefix code is
So we will <coughs> probably later convert this to pointer math and so on. Prefix code is this. Um, then the postfix byte is um, index plus two and that's the actual byte so and then that's a nasty special thing that we need to do for the first one. Uh, no, oh no, that's actually the last, no. First we get the last one. So let's put this here and re we repeat all of that. So we let's assert that uh, replay buffer count does not get too large. We will actually repeat all of this. Now actually, we will set the code here, right? So that's that will be the next code that we deal with. And actually, I mean, we will assert that the code never must be the clear code and the code never must be the end of data code. These two should never occur here. But it can be less than 256, in which case we have the first byte. So that's the first byte and actually the first byte we can immediately place. And then we do the dance of adding this stuff. Here, here's just a question. What should this be in this case? This stuff here. Should this be the original code that we had? So let's see here we 258 uh, and we replay and then we add we add to the 258, so yeah. Um, 
So I think this should be the original code. So I think what we need here is something like this. Prefix code is code. Okay, so we reverse everything into the replay buffer. If we knew, so in the, in the common case, normally, if we knew the length of the sequence, we could actually place it right directly into the buffer. Uh, if, if we have enough space. But to keep things simple, we first always reverse it into the replay replay buffer and and we do the following as long as we have bytes in the replay buffer we actually will provide these bytes. Uh, so we provide this byte as an output we decrement the replay buffer count and that's it um, right we don't need to do that we don't do anything else we don't need a new table entry we just replay Okay, that's that would be my first attempt at LCW decompression. So let's try it out. For sure there are many bugs and syntax errors, so let's first let's first fix the syntax errors. Okay, that's a trivial one. I have this problem that probably due to auto hotkey that I'm using, sometimes you see I get these funny uh, white space characters that are some strange Unicode <laughs> characters. I don't know. They are, I think they are triggered when I when I touch a modifier in space at the same time, then I get this strange thing that is not a space, but looks like a space. That's a bit annoying. So it does not take, um, let's regenerate our tags and let's look what does it take one two three four five six seven 
Ah, ja. Actually, actually, we didn't even use, we didn't even use mem. Because we don't, we don't even allocate a thing. And so we can also not fail. So we don't need the status. Wow, it's compiled already. So <laughs> let's run it and let's crash. Yeah, we crashed, of course. So let's see where we crash. Oh, we don't have the upstream. Did I forget to set the upstream? Yeah, stupid me. Might actually assert the tier that we have as an upstream. Oh, I should add an incomplete because we don't use the predictor spec. Okay, we get a non-terminating loop. That's not the worst thing to get. So let's see which loop it is. Let's break. Um, let's see what's going on. Let's clean up here a bit. Uh, let's see if we actually decoded anything useful. Doesn't look like it. No, we are actually we are actually at the very first. Oh, we have seen. We have. Ah, it has a three. Okay. We are actually at the very first byte. So it seems it seems we do not ever. We do not ever increment dst so we are spinning are we spinning on the 256 oh i think we are not 
we are not decrementing the bits buffer that's the problem i guess yeah stupid me no i did not want to use to close the chat even though nobody is chatting but i don't want to close the chat I want to close remedy because I know what the problem is. Now I forgot what the problem was. What was the problem? <laughs> what was the problem? Oh, that I did not I did not subtract the number of bits that we used up. That was the problem. We crash again. Progress. That's a new crash. Wow, why do we do we we didn't set a context function, did we? And that looks like garbage. Did we not did we not memset everything? Did I make a mistake in my memset? Okay, we go to, okay, we fail here. We call fail on the upstream. We call fail on the upstream. And the upstream is full of garbage. That is clearly randomized garbage poison. So we have still, why, why do we still have an invalid upstream? I thought we fixed that. Previously it was zero, but now it's inverted. Now let's check again. How do we, we set the upstream to the previous data sources stream. That should be valid. I mean, that should be the, the stream that is set by the SC8 base85 decode. That should, that should not be filled with garbage. Except maybe it is. I, I mean, because this is not debugged. So this function is Oh, yeah, I mean, it probably has all garbage because it doesn't do a mem set. A 
as I said, this this base eighty five stream is not yet debugged. Then let's get rid of these actually. Okay, and now we have the problem that uh, this ASC base 85 stream does not yet support context reporting. And I don't really feel like fixing that now. Let's rather Let's rather get some debug output from our LCW decoder.
So that should give us a bit of an idea of what is going on. Oh yeah, we're getting some output. Wow, lots of output. Where does it start? So, first code, that looks reasonable. The next code 50, that's also fine because I already checked that that is a 2 ASCII and ASCII 2 because if we look at the example, so this crap here, if this is decompressed, it should actually be this here and this starts with a 2 and then a space. So, two is fine. And we create a table entry 258, which should be two times, two times the two, which it does. So postfix is two and prefix is the two. Then we get the space And we create a new table entry that has the space and the two. That's also fine. We get something else. Uh, we probably should print. We should print us if we can. So. Let's print hex and ASCII for our convenience. So this is zero, one, two, three. Code, code. And if code is printable, so if code is at least that and code is smaller than 7f then we want debug buff otherwise put nothing there we should do the same thing for replaying the bytes That's so nice that you can use Vim commands to search in the scroll back. So two space J, that sounds okay. J, then we should get some kind of new, new lines and then BT, so space, yeah, new line. Uh, 
Okay, so we only get a D, no A. That's a bit strange. Okay, then B, T, that all sounds okay. Slash F1, this all looks okay. Interesting will be when we do the first replaying First byte, replayed byte. So here we have a double space that we are replaying. Uh, let's uh, let's for the re replaying. Let's also. Let's also do something like this. Let's simplify this a bit. Zero, one, two. And let's do a similar thing here. Okay, I think time to set a smaller font. And let's let's maybe let's actually copy this stuff. So we get two space J. I think here we have two spaces, but that might be an artifact of the copy and paste. BT slash F1 slash one. Okay, now we are replaying something. That's nice. We start replaying with two. We replayed two, five, eight. Two and two, which is actually wrong because we should replay two and space, I guess. Not two and two. So the 250 is the wrong sequence. It's created here as 2 and 2. That's wrong. 
it should be two in space. So maybe this special case that I thought that we have to do, the special case is not correct. This is probably not correct. <clears throat> The strange thing is here, <clears throat> if the output is really this, only 4, 5 and then 2, 5, 8, How is it supposed to know? We probably should, we should use this as a unit test and see what, what we get. as a first sanity check. Maybe they also have a mistake in a standard. That would not surprise me too much. Let's create a new test with a test fixture. I'm still at war with my modifier keys. So test at w the code label screen. So this is example two in seven four four two, I guess. So let's create <clears throat> let's create a test data stream. Do we have this somewhere here? No.
Yeah, you guessed all right, Win. You guessed all right. Win is just the greatest, even at guessing. So we need a buffer. I guess we should probably randomize or enumerate the size of the buffer. So let's prepare for that. <clears throat> let's prepare for that. Fire war continuing. So we init the stream. And then let's let's read it. doesn't matter. Let's make this something not too odd. Where did I use this? Yeah.
not called test data stream. Oh, probably, probably it's in data stream test, right? Yeah, it is. Okay. What did we get? We got 45. Replaying. 45, 45, so that's three of them, right? One, two, three, we get this again, one, two. So that's five, one, two, three, four, five, A. Is this what we expect? One, two, three, four, five, A. Looks all right. One, two, three, B. One, two, B. Okay, there is a problem. A. So now we get this code, which should be three, three times the dash. One, two. Okay, here we have a problem. The 259 has the wrong prefix. And that's definitely a problem. Why is this prefix? The prefix should be the previous code here. Created entry gets the code. Created table and this, this is wrong. This is definitely wrong. The code to append to. is wrong. Yeah, first let's, let's do it like this. But code to append to is the previous code. If the previous code is 256, then it is code. Otherwise it should be the previous code. Go to append to previous code is code. Do we not do we not reach do we not reach this? Or do we still mess up code here somewhere? No, we don't, we don't mess up. Actually, what I want here first part is, uh, um, Let's print this count. Uh, 
Why is where's code messed up? Here we print the correct code. These are all skip. This is also skip. Here we go. Prefix code is code. We do not touch code anywhere here. This is closing the right thing. <clears throat> what am I missing here? Do I really need to fire up the debugger for this? Let's see. Code is this one. That's wrong. Created table entry. This is correct. Then second argument is code to append to. This is wrong. Why why is this not okay? I need the debugger. I need to see people. I need to see what is going on. No, that's the wrong executable. So What is going on? What is our code? Let's watch. Yeah, that's the clearing. That's fine. So we skip this and the previous code, yeah, this should still be should still be the two five six, that's fine. Code is four five, that's okay. Okay, we create the first table entry code to append two. Let's also watch this. That's right. We do hit a special case where we are not sure if this is actually correct. Oh, maybe this one is wrong also. Maybe this should be code to append. Okay, but let's, that's not the problem here. So far it's fine. Now this is four, 45, that's also fine. So now we should get the first sequence. Yeah, we do get the first sequence. It's a valid sequence. So let's see what the prefix code should be 45. 
at the end. Yeah, it's 45 already. Code is still the same. Oh yeah, previous code is 45. So which which code are we actually creating now? 259. But the 259 should have the three. I mean, the output is four, five, and then two times this one. Actually, the second use of the 258 should create this one. The second use. Okay, so maybe, I mean, maybe it's actually fun. No, it's not fine. Because already the first use the first use already generates this, but actually the second use should generate this one. And I guess the first use of this should actually generate the repetition. So the encoder is the encoder is using a code that we have never seen before. The second use, yeah, here we, I mean, this would be the, the 260 would actually be the right sequence with the three dashes. But here the decoder uses the 259. That's actually the, the second sequence created. And I mean, what's not nice is we create a redundant sequence here. That's not looking good.
The problem is that if we take the this the previous code and the first part of this, we get a sequence that we actually have already in the table. So we should not we should not create a new entry because we already know this one. Do we need to check against that? That would be a nasty check to do. So we are actually creating a redundant sequence here and we shouldn't do it. So may, the, the problem is either that we generate this sequence too early or that we store the redundant sequence. I think we need to check that we do not add redundant sequences to our table. Available on CompuServe, that's nice. <clears throat> LCW compression. Okay, that's the special case. If it's not in the table, they do this special. Not duplication, but repetition of the first character. Our handling here is wrong of this case. I mean, I think we, we still should treat it this way if it is strictly larger, but if it is equal, then we should treat it like a repetition. Let's see. So we replay
I guess this is an error if our previous code is the clearing code because then we wouldn't know what to repeat. So if uh, the previous code is the clearing code, Otherwise, prefix code is the previous code. And then we would do here while this. Actually, this uh, this invariant we can check here also. So in this case, uh, the previous code would be the forty-five. So we go directly here, so code to append is the first character, which is, yeah, which is fine. First character. Oh, but actually in this case, ah, oh, that's so annoying because we need to replay That's really so annoying. Because you actually Add the thing and then you use it. So you need you need to know the first character of the old code.
You need to know the first character of the old code. That's a strange case. The output string is the sequence represented by the old code plus the first character of the old code. So you cycle, basically start the cycle of first character. <laughs> I don't know if I'm getting this right. Because I think we need an extra replay character here that is the first we need an extra replay character here that is the first um, The first byte of the old code, which we know only here. Uh, let's um, <laughs> Let's do it like this. So now we know, now we know first byte because it's the prefix code How to append prefix code? That's fine. That's also the first character. 
Hmm. No idea if this is going to work. That's so annoying, this case. Okay, we get the correct output here. That's good. So for 45, we don't add anything. Then we get this one. Start replaying sequence. First byte, one byte in red paper. That's perfect. And then we create the table entry. Nice. Okay. So the first table entry we create is space, it's two and a space. That's nice. So what's the first thing we replay after the one? We replay a two and a space. Very nice. Very nice. BTTF zero space TC. Zero space TC Okay, that's a space, that's strange. I mean maybe we have a copy and paste problem here. Zero space TW space seven two dot five space seven on two Space T, that's also all fine. We might have a problem here with the switching because this happens very close to the very close to where we are switching to 10 bits. Y space D A. Well, where do we have DA? Y space DA, that would be fine.
So maybe this is the case where we switch one step too late. Because this, this does not look right. So maybe we should already switch here. That's something that, that is written in the, in the PDF standard that you have this strange option, this, um, For the, there is a, an argument for the LCW decode that is called early change. If this value is one code length increases, shall occur one code early. And that's the default actually. So this is something we need to add, I think, is um, this early change flag. And if, if we have this early change, we should basically add this here. Then we increase this one too early, basically. Let's see if this does something. Let's just set it to true for now. The default, we will later have to parse this from the stream dictionary. That's such a mess. Maybe don't do it. I mean, here we don't change code size at all anyway. Why is software such a mess? Just because some people wrote broken code, now we have this strange 
um, we definitely do get much further it seems so we have y d a and the next one is a t and an a that's perfectly fine data so that was the problem here we do have another problem farther down it seems But we are not close. We are not close to any boundary here. Thanks for watching, and see you. Bye.